I got asked to play in this whilst I was still playing, and they were like, oh, you've got to be retired, and I feel like they were saying, I think it's about time you retired. <laughs> Right, my name's Karen Carney. I'm here with the magnificent Jill Scott and the legend Emma Hayes. And we're here to dissect last year's Soccer A 2022. Ooh. So what was the score? What happened then? Ooh. You were there, you were the manager or the coach. I think the first half, rest of the world dominated the game. No, yeah. Incredible team. Afu, what shape he was in. Wow. Kevchenko. I think Noah Beck. Um, Brilliant player for them, and I thought they dominated the first half. And I was worried, I said to Harry at half time, I thought we really struggled to get into the game. But second half, dominated the game. Should have held out. The what was the shift from first half to second half? And what did you do different or subs? You go, right, we've got to change it. I think second half, Mark Wright pushed on a little bit higher from left back, and I think that really helped. Got the penalty. Um, well, Chunks got the penalty, didn't he? Oh, yeah, I, what happened? I think Chunks wanted to take it, and then did Mark Wright... There was a bit of... Chunks wanted it, but when <laughs> he's whooping up the crowd, it's Mark Wright against Petr Cech. It's right in the corner. Celebrity, only the celebrities can take it, the pros can't yeah, take yeah. it. So, Carragher was on it to take it. He was down to take the penalty. And obviously was told you can't, it's got to be one of the celebrities. And the group decided that Mark Wright was the best player to finish it. OK. The group bar chunks. The group bar chunks decided. <laughs> and listen, to be fair, he can feel slighted, you know? He scored penalties for Soccer Aid. And yeah. for what it's worth, he's been practising all week. Yeah. I know Vicky's not here, but last year, I mean... She's at the front of the dugout at West Ham. She's like, Emma, I am so used to wearing bomb-making equipment or... <laughs> with my police book here and there. She said, this is my dream, to beat Martin in a Soccer A game. <laughs> Honestly, she is... Uh, she said she's going to be going to you tonight. Yeah. To game. She said she's got some information for us, like real high technical detail on playing midfield. So I'm going to come to her maybe after 20 minutes and she's going to tell I've us. been working at her this, with her this week about sort of the positions of everyone, tactically what information. So she's going to have little notes and she yeah. she's going to go through you, particularly the first half. I'm looking forward to it. She's a great person though, isn't she? She's a great person. You two are thick as thieves. Yeah, we're like two teenagers, 15-year-olds, you know, sort of scurrying around the back of the group, you know, getting coffees, hanging with Harry, how can we not love that? I reckon... David Seaman, talking about fishing all day. You know, this is just a wonderful combination. Do you think we're going to see you on the next series of Line of Duty? He <laughs> <laughs> is Emma. She comes out of nowhere. Listen, I mean... You'd be a good spy. I think the chances of that happening are very slim. Vicky, Vicky doesn't watch football and I don't watch Line of Duty and, you know, for what it's worth, <laughs> friendship made in heaven. No fangirling. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, was the goals... What was the score at half-time? Anyone remember? I... don't. I think I don't remember. Tom Grennan got a great equal... Oh, that was come down the side and it was a great... Yeah, 1-1. Tom mm. Grennan scored in the first half. I mean, yeah. Tom Grennan. He's a player, I've isn't he? I've done concerts this week. He scored second half. That's yeah. when we started to dominate again. Okay. Grennan. Oh, he's yeah. outpacing Comston here. It's Grennan! Oh, that's terrific! And boy, does he deserve it! What a goal from Tom Grennan to give England the lead! Moments after half-time! How Tom good Grennan. is Tom Grennan? Oh, he's just, he's brilliant. He's an energy bunny, and the fact that he's done these concerts this week, <gasps> he said to me, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, I need 90 minutes, but he's struggling a bit in his ankle. But we need the form from last yeah, year, yeah, because yeah. I think he's an important player for him. Yeah. I think having never done it, I just don't know what I'm, like, going into. Like, training's been good, but you watch it on TV, and it's really hard to know, like, what level it's going to be at. Have you ever played in star football? Uh, I've done it you, like... Have you? Yeah, a little bit. Well, it's a bit like that. Is it? Yeah, it's a bit like going to play with your mates who are not footballers. Oh, but then there's some decent players like Paul Schools, Gary Neville, um, you decent. Tom Grennan. 
Paz Carney, and you all of a Luke Jack Wilshire. Yeah, Jack Wilshire. Jermaine Defoe, Michael Dawson. Got Gavin Hill. Hill. Yeah, yeah. So I think the standard, there is going to be players that can play. Yeah, England need a win. Shift in the head, though, do you think you can tell the difference between the pros and the celebs in terms of when they step into the arena? Is the like shift? Like, I'll tell, I'll tell everybody at home tonight. Watch the tunnel. Watch everybody walking out. Watch the nerves, the anxiety <laughs> yeah. on the top of their faces. They will feel like Old Trafford is 200,000 <laughs> in their faces. It is extremely nerve-wracking for them. I'm starting to Front feel nervous no, now, no, to be honest. Yeah, like, you wait, it gets business. Everyone gets their suits on, it's business. Yeah. It's business. Was the last time you played there in the Euros, then? Uh, Opening game? Yeah, but I didn't get on the pitch that game. Awkward. So this is my... Uh, yeah. Thanks for that, Kaz. No, this is my first time Old Trafford. Hopefully, I'll get some minutes um, tonight. But, yeah, I'm you looking forward to it. I got asked to play in this whilst I was still playing, and they were like, oh, you've got to be retired. And I feel like they were saying, I think it's about time you retired. Gee. <laughs> so, Gee. it's good that they've waited till I've retired. But when it goes to a draw, obviously, there was then a penalty shootout at the end of the game. Like, how did that go? So, 2-2. The thing about the penalties is all I could hear was Emma, uh, as soon as the whistle goes, it's penalties immediately. So we had to name the five penalty takers there and then. But Harry had lost it. <laughs> lost it for the fact that we weren't able to change out David Harewood because he'd injured himself. Yeah. And we were told he has to put a celebrity in goal. And we didn't have a backup goalkeeper bar David James. And Harry absolutely lost it. We can't put an outfield player in goal. <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't having any of it. And to be fair to David, he stayed in goal. Yeah. So the next day I did an appearance with Harry after soccer aid and he came in and uh, he was still so annoyed. <laughs> like literally yeah, no. the whole thing. Yeah. He came in and then Jamie had to ring him and be like, Dad, like, relax, like, you know, it's, I know it's a charity, but you're yeah, no, not happy he, he about it when he's it. so bitter that, like, he's a winner, isn't he? He said to me yesterday, this is it's four years, yeah. like, it's time. And I said, look, we've practised penalties. We've got an idea of the positions for everyone. We have an idea now how to, to get it right, and I think this team's much stronger, of course, with you two in it. Much Definitely stronger. feel pressure now. Definitely. Hello. So how did the penalties go? Obviously, we lost. Did we score? Men? Tom, Tom, Paddy. Four one. Tom, Tom. I think Tom went first for us, if I'm correct, and he missed it. Oh. And it, you know, Tom was a banker for us, and I think that, you know, that put the pressure on the team because he'd been so amazing, and you know, missing penalties don't. And the first one is important. The first right? one, and I think it gave him momentum. And but what all I remember was looking backwards and seeing Lee Mack and the pain of Lee Mack year after year after year after year. And trust me, he will tell you about that pain. Yeah. yeah. And then just for him to have his big moment. I think if he could have ripped his clothes off and reveal a, like a complete skimp... What do they call those? Mankinis? Oh, yeah. If Lee Mack what? could have revealed a mankini, like... I've got an image in my head was, right now. He was top of the world. He yeah. was... This is it. No one's going out now. It's Lee Mack for the win. It's Mack. It's in! I get to see it again. Lee Mack! Super Lee Mack wins Soccer A 2022 for the World 11. He did like a documentary about penalties, didn't he? About Soccer A. I don't remember watching it and seeing that he'd obviously missed and the pain of it and he went and he practised. So I think what watching that guy. documentary and then watching him score is like an iconic moment of Soccer Aid. I still don't know why he's playing for the rest of the world. To be fair, I've just been for a walk with Skulls here and he looks like, do you know the Ribena berries? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know August, Augustus Gloop in Challenge Shock of Fantasy is about to explode the head because he's basically, yeah, that's what Skulls looks like. Oh, right? <laughs> anyway, so